Now, imagery you can think of, uh, you know, we were using it to share across the organization, do analytics at, with it. You can also use it to monitor, uh, you know, maybe pad pre-construction, during construction, and post. Uh, there's other ways to monitor your operations as well. One of those is through real-time information. And that can be on a fixed asset that has a sensor on it. Um, information can be streaming in through your SCADA or a data historian, or it may be moving assets such as vehicles or uh, vessels out in the ocean. So today to discuss with us how they're monitoring their real-time operations from Apache Corporation, Xavier Burney. Xavier. Thanks, Dal. So I'm going to be talking about Apache's remote operation centers and how we're using Esri in them. Um, these are control rooms that uh, Apache has set up to monitor field operations and then coordinate activity. And, and specifically, we've been focusing on production operations. And what you see here is a simulation of our environment. We're restricted from showing Apache data, but Esri was able to set, set up this simulation for us. And the first thing you'll note are the arrows moving around. Those are the Apache fleet vehicles. And I'll return to that uh, in a moment. What I'd like to bring your attention to is the green and red dots. So the green and red dots are sensor data that's being streamed directly from the field into the operations dashboard that you see here. That sensor data is coming in through OSI Soft Pi integrator for Esri and it's giving us a real-time view of what's alarming, what you see in red, and then the assets that are operating normally in green. And the types of assets that we're tracking are artificial lift, tank battery levels, as well as meter values. So one thing I'd like to say at this point is we did an a information sharing meeting with a famous or well-known uh, consulting IoT company in the oil and gas industry. If I were to say the name here, everybody in the room would recognize them. And we showed them what we had. We saw what they were, were uh, suggesting that we adopt, and they were thoroughly impressed with what we've stood up with Esri. This took us about a week, two weeks to set up this uh, relatively fast. Ordinarily, they were communicating it might take uh, six months to a year to set up something like this. So it really speaks to what you can put together quickly with uh, Esri solutions working with OSI Soft to stream in data. So at this point, let's, let's ask ourselves, what would pumpers be doing in the field uh, typically? So they would... Um, they would... A, pumpers usually visit uh, a route in a preset order, so, uh, or they visit a route that's predetermined. So they might visit uh, a series of sites throughout a, a, a day or over a course of a week, but it's largely in their head how they visit these. It's, it's their intuitive nature, how they want to visit these sites. So the first thing we did was map our lease roads. And once we had our lease roads map, we mapped, we could combine that with an Esri commercial street map road network to, to build a routable network. And once we accomplished that, we could provide an optimal recommendation using Esri tools to the, the way that those pumpers would visit the sites. But that's not really what we're after, right? What we want to do is make sure folks in the field are focused on the most important things. So that's not visiting the green, it's visiting the red, the stuff that's alarming. So what we can do is blend that alarm data along with the routing network and route based on the alarms. So we can come up with a sequence of stops that the pumper would visit that, that is optimi optimized on our lease roads. This is called exception-based routing. You've heard the term pump by exception. That's what we're getting at here. So that's great. But what happens if you have an alarm for an important asset pops up during the course of the day? How do you, how do you address that? And so that's where we go, we visit back to our fleet vehicles. This allows you to figure out the nearest resource to fix that alarm. But then you, you might, you, our, our um, operators were asking the question, who ha what's the appropriate skill set? 
So we were able to visu uh, symbolize the different vehicles by the type of skill set. So pumpers are in purple, uh, pipeline engineers are in black, mechanics are in red, and so forth. So that's fantastic. We have our Apache fleet vehicles. They are, we have them visualized on the map and we can use that to our advantage. But our Apache fleet vehicles are made up of our own employees. That's about 50% of our workforce in the field. The other 50% are contractors. How do we get visibility into what they're doing? So we leveraged workforce. We rolled that out to those contractors and we were able to bring that data into the operations dashboard and visualize it. And in particular, those contractors, we didn't want to set them up with access to our own network via VPN. So we leveraged ArcGIS Online to reduce the security risks and keep them segregated while still blending that data into the dashboard. And that's what you see here with the green icons. That is workforce. So now we've got everything visualized. How do we coordinate activity to uh, resolve these things in the field? Well, we've got workforce for our contractors. Let's expand it to the whole field. We did that. And once we added workforce for everybody in the field, we could then find locations that are alarming. Here's an example. And what we could do is perform a workforce assignment based on those alarming assets in order to see, uh, in order to expedite someone's servicing those problems. So here you see, I'm a pumper. I received a critical notice that there's a problem in the field. I also have my regular to-do list. The critical issue pops up at the top. I can then select that. I can get any details related to that uh, issue I can see in the workforce app. I can open up. I can navigate to the assignment on our lease road network. I can uh, open up and fill out any additional forms that may be useful. Apache right now has been looking at safety concerns and really uh, building up around that. And then one way that we might do that is with a spill prevention uh, and, and uh, incident form. So we can, here's an example of that that Esri set up. It launches survey one, two, three. And from there, you can see we load the form and we can fill it out, complete the assignment. At this point, we returned to our dashboard and we wanted to track visits to sites, the actual operational activity after we've assigned, performed the assignment. So we set up geofences around our properties and we monitored when these vehicles were breaking the geofence, entering which symbolizes as orange, and then when the vehicles have addressed the alarm and exited the geofence. So it provides a way to start building up some additional service metrics, time on site, response time. Uh, you get a visual, if, if an alarm is showing in red, but your boundary is in green, that means you need to call them back and, uh, and have them revisit the site. So at this point, um, I'll, I'll sum it up and say that our main focus was reducing lease operating expenses and maximizing production, and we're leveraging Esri to accomplish that. And I, and I will say that one critical piece to make this work is the collaboration and working with the um, uh, control room operation center folks, because it's really their vision that we're capturing to put into this um, that really makes it successful. Um, Dow. All right, thanks, Xavier. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, Xavier. <clears throat> so, so, true story, about a uh, month, six weeks ago, I met Xavier in San Antonio. I went to their uh, operations room, met Mike Flores, I think he's out here as well. And they actually have this in, uh, being implemented and they're using it. And I was impressed. So, it's like, wow, Xavier, you know, everybody wants to do this. These people out here watching, if they're not doing it already, I can tell you they probably want to do it. So thanks for sharing your story, and Xavier's around if you want to talk to him about it this week. So again, thank you, Xavier. Thanks, Dal. Thanks, everyone.